You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir Lee's Path. Man, that last video! Oh my goodness, the artwork on that! Oh, hey, yeah, man, give me some of that! Oh, now that's a lovely possum. Now, anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it, shall we? Please let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's go. All right, all right, alarm chain, you're up. Let's continue. <clears throat> okay. My eyes scan over him. His stomach's fur color is a lighter shade of gray than his arms, matching his face. He's not as beefy as Oscar, but there's enough muscle there to show just how much power in his powers in his tall frame. Oh. His chest is exposed, but my focus is dragged towards two features on his stomach. The more prominent of the two is a massive scar running from the right side of his stomach around the side of his body. I don't know just how far back the scar goes, but I'm more curious about what could have caused such a large mark. The other less prominent feature is directly on his belly button, a golden navel piercing. It's small, but the light reflects off its metal surface, grasping my attention. Staring at it causes my eye and my ears to burn. Staring causes my ears to burn, and I'm... My, you mean my eyes to burn. And I'm much more aware of just how much of Lee I'm being exposed to. Hmm. He moves towards me and I look up in a surge of panic, worried that my ugly might have upset him, but he's just looking down at me without a hint of shame in his expression. Without missing a beat, he kneels down and caresses my nose, the rough texture a stark contrast to how gentle his touch is. The sensation of his fingers against my cheek helps me realize just how strangely intimate this is, especially with the way he's caressing my face, his own only a couple of inches away. Lee's fingers move slowly and methodically as he checks around my nose. When he presses against it, I have to avoid wincing at the small surges of unexpected pain. He pulls his hands away with a full view of him again. I'm once again reminded of just how much Lee is exposed and how close his presence is. Oh, there we go again. Looking back down, his eyes, my eyes once again are drawn to the large scar, and a large scar going across his side. My hands slowly move towards it before hesitation slows my slows my progress. I did just get hit in the face for touching Lee when I didn't when he didn't expect it, but he promised he wouldn't hurt me again, and I do trust him. Making sure to not hide my movements, I bring my hand closer to the damaged skin. As if he expected it, he shuffles around to move that area away from me and brings a hand to my own, guiding it back to my lap. Not, n not right now. Another time. That's something I'm not sure I want to get into. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Kid, you're fine. I just decked you in the face. You don't need to apologize. But I'll show it to you later. Just not right now, okay? Okay, how's my nose looking? Fine. Doesn't look to be any real damage. It'll heal. You're tough. After cupping my face in one final comforting gesture, Lee gets up and stretches. I have to look away to keep myself from gawking at him again, but my shame burning my ears. Kid, I'm not Oscar, but that doesn't mean I'm not flattered. I'm gonna go get cleaned up, okay? I can't walk home covered in blood. I try to escape from the situation, only for Lee to stop me. He flashes his toothy smirk and ruffles his hand through my head fur. Hey! Clean that up, too. Your hair's a mess. There's only a few more minutes before the, kid, before the kids pack up, so I'm gonna kick a ball around with him for a bit. Turning away and jogging off towards the field, I notice something dark near the belt of his pants. There's something red on his back, just above the belt, but I can't make out what it is. I wonder if it's another scar. Hmm. Exiting the bathroom, I can't help but feel extremely lucky. I managed to avoid staining most of my clothes. The fur around my face and hands are still a deep pink, but that will eventually wash out. My nose is still sore, but it's barely noticeable now. If I'm lucky, I might it might not even bruise. I hope it doesn't. Lee's already beating himself up about it already. Let me turn the music up a little bit. This game has really good music. And this 100% makes me think of a bl uh, music from Oblivion. I mean, I love it. It's nice and peaceful. It's like uh, wandering around. It's like wandering around like Tamriel at night or something. All right. The bench we were sitting on, sitting at before, is still empty. I have expected Lee to be finished and waiting there for me, but he hasn't returned yet. Looking around the field, I can see most of the kids are either packing up or leaving. Seems like we arrived at the perfect time. You must be the new victim. A voice whispers that, that right into my ear, and I nearly yell as I jump away from its owner, a little yip sneaking sneaking out despite myself. Oh my god! Hello there. Looking over, I can see a possum girl around my height. She's wearing a t-shirt with a logo for a sports team I don't recognize, and white shorts that don't go below her knees. Must be the new victim. Well, that wording. Her physique reminds me a lot of Lee's. Very lithe with some muscle hidden underneath. I'm pretty sure she's got more muscle in her arms than I do. 
Uh, hi, you must be Lee's little sister, right? I assume. You'd assume right. Name's Charlie. As she pushes her arm forward, I'm, expect I'm expecting her to give a handshake, so I'm surprised when instead she decides to lightly punch me in the shoulder. And you must be Wallace, the victim for my new mom. He's been chatting about you for a while. New mom? Ashley. He might be my older brother, but he's more like my mom. Something catches her attention and her face changes to a more inquisitive expression. Or by the looks of your fur, maybe he's more like Dad. Ashley? Is that Lee's real name? Yeah, he doesn't like being called that. He thinks it makes him sound like a girl. Don't stop him in high- didn't stop him in high school, though. In high school? She lets out a snort, which quickly turns into a shrill laugh. It's so loud, I'm worried she's going to grab the attention of everyone else, but all the others ignore it without even giving her a passing glance. This must be a common occurrence with her. If there's one thing that runs in the family, it's a total lack of shame. Oh, no, that's not my story to tell. Bring it up with him later, though. That's gonna be a blast. Oh, and tell me how it goes. She pulls out her phone and taps away at it for a few seconds. The silence feels foreign with how much she's been pushing the conversation. I wasn't expecting his sister to be so different from him. They're like night and day. The only thing similar about the two of them is their species and shared fur color. Surprised? Huh? I'm asking if you're surprised I'm his sister. I get that a lot. Well, not a lot, because he doesn't often make friends, but people think I'm going to be edgy like he is or some princess by the way he talks about me. No, I didn't expect you to be anything. She raises her eye about that and places a hand on her hips. I could even see her tail whipping against the gravel below her lightly. Not like that. I was surprised that you're so different from Lee. He's so quiet and, uh, melancholic? Edgy. What? No, he's so nice and gentle. Doesn't stop him from looking like he's going to stab someone in an alleyway. She finally decides to give me a break and flashes me a very familiar toothy smile. Now I can see the resemblance. It looks like that runs in the family, too. He's great, don't get me wrong. I love him with all my heart, and I owe him more than you know. I just wish he wasn't so, you know. She makes a choking motion with her hands before giving up a, giving up with a laugh. The mood with her is so light, it reminds me of hanging out with a certain otter. With a certain otter. She had to get along great with him. All this talk about Lee does bring one thing to mind, however. Where is Lee? Uh, I said he was going to kick a ball around with some of the kids, but the field is pretty empty now. Oh, yeah, that's why I'm here. Ash wanted me to tell you he's just switching his shirt. I bring him spares for him in case he gets messy helping us out. And he'd prefer it if you stopped calling him that. <laughs> Lee suddenly appeared right next to us. I didn't even hear him walking over the gravel towards us. His arms are crossed, but despite the annoyed look he's giving us, he doesn't look angry. In fact, he looks like he's trying to act a lot more upset than he is. Piss off. I'm not going to call you Lee. That sounds so dumb. Strong words for someone with their hair exposed. Just like that, there's a burst of emotion as Lee reaches over and tries to mess up Charlie's hair, but she squeals and runs around the other side of me before he can reach her. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Ashley. She sticks her tongue out, but this time Lee only gives a sigh, the corners of his mouth quirking up despite how much he's trying to look grumpy. She really is a soft spot for him. See, I told you she was a brat. Looking back over at Lee, I see he's wearing a very similar type of red shirt from before. Wait, it's the exact same kind of shirt, a plain red tee. Do you have any other clothes? Without thinking, I, I blurt out the first words that come to mind without taking the time to think them through. Why did I say that? That's such a rude thing to say. But Lee doesn't take any offense to it. In fact, he looks like he's taking the question seriously. He's squinting his eyes as if he's deep in thought despite the simplicity of what was asked. Not a lot. I have my work jumpsuit and some older shirts. I have a few different, je different pairs of jeans, but most of my shirts look like this. You could always wear what you used to wear in high school. You still got those. And you can do the dishes for a week if you want. I'm serious, Ash. I know you really like wearing those, but you're always trying to do this tough guy bullshit. Charlie. But she doesn't look like she's having any of it. Walking up to Lee with her hand with her hands put on her hips. She's getting right in his face despite how much taller than her he is. I've been wanting to tell you about this later tonight, but this is the perfect time. You have a social life now. Where would you like, especially if it's just with them? No one's going to pick a fight with you if you're with them, right? Okay, fine. I'll think about it, but drop it for an hour, or else you really are doing the dishes for a week. Finally satisfied, she takes a few steps away from him, a proud look on her face. I wouldn't want to get on her bad side. I want to inquire on what she's referring to, but Lee gives me a shake of his head, rolling his green eyes before mouthing the word brat to me. Whatever they were discussing, Lee clearly doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Looking to change the subject, I decided to go with, some, with something fitting for where we are. You like you? So you like soccer? Yeah, I... Before we get into this, can we start walking? I want to drop Wallace off at his place before it gets dark. 
Yeah, sure. So, I'm a big fan, as you can see. She grabs the side of her shirt, pulling them outwards to make the logo more visible, but the roaring white leopard on it is confusing me. I thought your mascot was the white lion. Now Charlie is looking at me with an offended expression. I already know I've opened a can of worms. I catch a smirk growing on Lee's face, breaking his stoic exterior as he tries to hide it. The white lions are for our state, in football. This is for the Everwinter Snow Leopards. I really like watching their games. Their goalie is crazy good. You don't even know our own univer you don't even know your own university's mascot? Uh, well, I'm not really into sports too much. Staring too much at boys. Wait, what? She gives another hearty laugh, and I'm once again reminded of Oscar's const constant cheery mood. It's surprising that Lee doesn't get along well with Oscar, considering how his sister acts. Am I that obvious? Hmm? Lee leans closer as my voice is uninten unintentionally hushed more than normal. There's no indication on my face he understands what I'm referring to. I just assumed Oscar was good at telling people's type, and the way he interacted with me tipped, me out, tipped, off that, but tipped off the others, but your sister hasn't seen me and Oscar together, so I'm surprised she knows I'm... You know, gay? Yeah. Well, Ash already told me about you and the way Oscar's trying to get in your pants. And how you seem to enjoy the attention. I never said that. You said he was into it. I said he was clearly into guys, not specifically the way Oscar acted towards him. Yeah, yeah, if it makes you feel better, you're only a bit obvious. Don't worry, though. Lee's gay, too. You should have seen him in high school. Charlie? He also thinks you're cute. He told me last night. Huh? Charlotte, shit! To go with his booming voice, Lee's arms are moving with his words, showing more visible emotion than I've seen amongst the three days I've known him. Lee's ears are darkening to a deeper shade of pink, and despite his firm expression, I can tell he's feeling very embarrassed. His sister really knows how to get under his skin. Come on, you said it! We're not talking about this, just ignore her. Hmm. Wallace? It's only now that I'm noticing that Lee calls me by my name instead of kid when, you're, when we're around his sister. There's something about the way he says my name that makes the blood rush to my ears. It's just a name, but it feels special having Lee acknowledge me. God, I sound like a love-struck 13-year-old. Oh, now I see it. That really was cute. I can see what Ash sees in you. Wish you weren't into boys. Oh my god. She gives a giggle as she bounces a bit more ahead of the two of us, giving me, a, me and Lee some space. I wonder if she's doing that on purpose. Then, as if to answer my question, she looks back over her shoulder to give me a wink and nudges her head in Lee's direction. Subtlety is not one of her strong points. Sorry about her. She's a handful, but she means well. No, she's fine. I like her. She's very energetic and sweet. Nah, she's a brat. He says that, but the smile he's wearing as he watches her try to balance on the small wooden fence tells me more than, my, throws me more than any words. But she's a good kid. I'd do anything for her. Silence falls between us as the words Charlie spoke still lingers. Something about them won't leave my head, and I gotta say something about it before my curiosity burns a hole through my head. Thanks for calling me cute, I, I think. I've never had anyone call me cute besides my mom. My words manage to knock him off guard, and he only gives me a nod before turning his head towards the footpath, muttering a quiet response under his breath. Yeah, no problem. It's true. I can see what Oscar sees in you, though I think we're seeing different things. Picking up his pace, Lee leaves those words to linger with me as he catches up to his sister. He tries to yank her off the fence, but she just jumps off and, nod and dodges out of his attempts to grab her. It's a wholesome sight that I'm not able to properly enjoy with the remnants of Lee's words spinning in my head. I didn't really think Lee was interested in me, and I'm not sure he actually is, but getting a compliment like that was an unexpected but wonderful surprise. My own smile cracks across my face, and I can't help but feel energetic myself. I hook up my pace to join the other two once again. Walking into the lobby, Charlie's still chatting my ear off about the latest Everwinter Snow Leopards game. She's been trying she's been trying to help me understand the details of professional soccer for the last ten minutes, but I don't think I'm getting it. She finally lets uh, lets up when she feels the cool breeze of the air conditioner, looking over to the machine with the hunger them with the hunger I'd more closely associate with a wild animal than a person. Everwinter never truly gets freezing, but their autumns aren't known for their heat. Soccer practice have my soccer practice must have really worked up a sweat if she gets this hot. I'll text you later. I'll turn you into a sports fan, trust me. She scurries over to the chair directly underneath the AC, content to just pull her phone out and engross herself in it. She doesn't even give me another glance. Lee, on the other hand, walks with me to the elevator before grabbing my tail softly to get my attention. It's gentle, so it doesn't hurt, but it still causes my tail to flick away out of out of reflex. Make sure you sleep tonight. I don't want to. I don't want to catch wind of you getting only two hours of sleep again. Don't worry, I'll be going to bed early tonight. I still feel really exhausted, especially after all the walking. I bet. Just take care of yourself. 
Hey, Will, and thanks for spending the day with me. I, I know it must have been a hassle, but with what happened in class and interrupting your plans... You're a fine kid. She really liked you. She's fun. She's so full of everything, I guess. You can say that again. Pressing the button. I expect to say goodbye, but Lee cuts, cuts me off as he places a hand over my shoulder. Oh, hold on, let me go back. The touch reminds me of his hand caressing my face, and I have to push that memory aside before my mind wanders. Hey, if you're still having nightmares and need someone to talk to, just call me. I'll be there for you, okay? His muzzle is curled in a smile, but his eyes have this sad look in their, sad look in their face like they're filled with guilt. Is this about the nose? No, n not really. Just lean on me if you need to. I will. I, I promise. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and take a shower. Yes, I know. I need to get rid of all the blood stains. You stink, too. Weasel thing. I've been walking. I've been walking all day underneath the sun with no deodorant. The realization that I've been walking all day underneath the sun is enough to override all my, all my other thoughts. I press my arms hard. I press my arms hard against my pits, hoping that I don't need to. Uh, hoping that I don't reek too badly. Lee only gives a slight shoulder pat in response before heading back to the way we came. His lack of reactions is a blessing right now, though I still keep my pits together and my pits closer and tail pressing against my butt. I'll catch you later, kid. You too. I'll see you on Monday. Doubt it. Lily's going to organize something. She's the type to always want to do things. Trust me, I live with one. I didn't really think about that, but she definitely seems like the type to want to socialize a lot. I should expect a text from her later, even if it isn't about meeting up again. Soon enough, the elevator arrives, and I catch Lee hugging Charlie before both of them head out the door. It's a heartwarming sight, but I can't help but wonder what caused them to live on their own. Likely an abusive parent. The thought leads me back to Lee's scar, and I begin to speculate the worst before shutting that line of reasoning. He'll tell me when he's ready. Right now, I need to take a shower and get some rest. Now that Lee's pointed it out, I do stink. I need to get out here, get out of here before anyone else notices. Entering my room entering my room after taking a shower, I feel the fatigue from the entire day rushing through me. All the excitement made me forget just how exhausted I really am. Should I make some food? Ugh, honestly, I'd rather just get some rest and eat a bunch tomorrow. Without wasting my time, I made a beeline towards my bed, only sparing a moment to place my bag on the desk. Falling on the bed, I'm flooded with my own scent. It's comforting and causes my drowsiness to almost overtake me. But before I sleep, I should probably check my phone for any messages. Everyone's probably worried about me after what happened. Hovering it above my face, I can see I have a bunch of messages from four different people. I can't think I can't even think of a time when I've had this many people trying to contact me. The first one is from mom, just telling me she hopes I'm having a good week, that she and dad are always available if I need to talk, and that I'm always welcome home whenever I need it. The benefits of still being in the same town, I suppose. It brings a warm, fuzzy feeling to my chest and a bit of guilt for not calling them as much as I as much, but I think they understand that I need some time. As a compromise, I send them a text letting them know that I love and miss them. Hopefully that's enough for now. Text messages. The next message is from Lucas. Hey, are you feeling better? If you need to, you can come to my room if you're still feeling shitty. My roommate wouldn't mind. He keeps annoying me to get you to come down. The image of this mystery roommate pestering Lucas about me causes me to giggle. Looks like Lucas' roommate is a pretty good guy. They seem to get along well, nonetheless. Well, I'm doing a lot better. My nose hurts a bit after an accident, but it's nothing serious. Lee and his sister were a lot of fun. Feeling a bit more awake and giddy, I move on to the next messenger, and unsurprisingly, it's from Oscar. The thought of that giant otter holding a tiny phone in bed brings a bigger smile to my face. <laughs> Yo, just checking up on you. Hope you're feeling better, man, and I hope it wasn't too boring having family time with the possums. But if something interesting happened, you gotta let me know. I don't even know how I'm supposed to respond to that. I don't know if what we did was what Oscar would consider interesting. I just sent him a similar message to what I sent to Lucas before moving on to the last one. It's from Lily, and it looks like it's from only a couple minutes ago. She must have finally finished everything and gotten home. Hey, wanted to ask if you wanted to get together with everyone and get some lunch tomorrow. I wanted to make sure you're doing good, and I bet everyone is worried about you. Let me know, I'll, and I'll sort it all out, okay? It's not surprising that Lily is setting something up. She always has something in mind for what we can all do together. It's just surprising how organized she is. It is really nice to have people always wanting to hang out, though. I never really hung out with friends since middle school. That sounds great! I'm gonna get some rest. Just text me the time and place and I'll be there tomorrow. I do have some classes tomorrow at 8 and 10, or so anything after 12 should be good. There's a part of me that wants to call her and talk. I feel like she'd know exactly what to say to put everything at ease. It's just the vibe she has. But I'm too much, I'm much too tired. After everything today, on top of already not having much sleep, I just want to crash for the night. We're already going to the chat tomorrow anyway. I toss my phone over my nightstand and shove my head into the pillow. My body must be, be even more exhausted than I thought as sleep overtakes me almost immediately. A cool breeze flows through my fur. 
sending a shiver down my spine. Autumn in Everwinter is rarely cold during this time of the day. It's usually only during night or when it rains that the temperature dips. It must be the beach air. Walking down Jackson Street, which trails alongside the beach, the ocean air nips through my loose shirt and leaves the salty scent of the air flowing around me. How long has it been since I visited the beach? Five years? Uh, I never thought I'd ever come this close to it ever again. Looking through the gaps between stores, I can see the ocean behind me. The ocean behind them. Sparking, sparkling as if covered in glitter. The lack of gusting winds leaves the water still, making it look like something out of a painting. Another block, I, another, after another block, I spot the building I've been searching for. It's a moderately long single floor building. Modeled after a shack. The sign above it looks intentionally run down, spelling out the name Snapping Jaws. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. We got to meet Lee's sister. Oh lord, she's so much like him. She's like a spunkier, livelier version of him. Maybe on lots of caffeine. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye